And so it begins. One of the big changes for the VA has happened again. We're talking about digestive system conditions today. This has been anticipated for quite a while and it's finally here. I'm gonna break down for you specifically IBS, GERD. If you're a packed actor or a burn pits exposure veteran, this applies to you. If you have IBS, GERD, of course this applies to you. I'm gonna show you what happened if you have the rating now, if you're currently in progress, or in how to navigate these new rules. I'm Jordan Anderson, VA Claims Academy. Let's step to the computer and break this down. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna break down for you the new rating criteria for the GERD and the IBS. Right now, the reason that I'm doing those two is because it's your high value claims and also a packed act claim, something that a lot of you are dealing with. I'm also going to compare and contrast. What are the actual changes? What's the difference between how this was rated a couple of days ago at the time of this video and how it's currently rated effective now? At the end of it, I'm also going to go through a Q&A, make sure that your questions are answered as far as, hey, if I already am rated for this, am I in jeopardy of getting denied or, or, or declined, decreased, or should I apply for an increase right now? I'm going to give you that and my opinion on whether this is more favorable or less favorable to you, the veteran. So let's get into it. Let's talk about GERD first, gastroesophageal reflux disease. First of all, dispel a little bit of a misconception. GERD absolutely is a whole separate condition than IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Whereas irritable bowel syndrome is talking about, you know, the bowels, right? So constipation, diarrhea, largely things of that nature. GERD is primarily affecting the esophagus as the name implies. Now this is sort of like the highway uh, of your throat. So think of this highway as you know, normally being flowing and, and things are working nicely. Well, GERD is like a traffic jam of that highway. And this traffic jam could cause damage ultimately to this road, in this case, your esophagus. The new rating criteria is focused now on how severe that damage to the road is. And more specifically, what kind of road work, if you will, would be needed to fix it. So let me show you what I mean. Beforehand, GERD was primarily rated as, you know, the symptoms of your heartburn, maybe your regurgitation, or your impact to your overall health. Now, it is primarily focused on something called esophageal stricture. Now, esophageal stricture is like the narrowing of this highway. So the more uh, severe the stricture and the more road work is needed, the higher the rating. Here's what I mean. The 50% threshold could be someone that if you had, you know, difficulty swallowing because of the stricture, again, the narrowing of that esophagus, and you needed something called dilation. Now, dilation is the widening of this highway, which could be done a number of ways. A lot of people have a little balloon stuck down their throat, believe it or not. It's kind of an uncomfortable procedure where they have a balloon inflated in their esophagus section, and it dilates, it makes wider that highway, that esophagus. If you have to do that three or more times per year, you could be rated at the 50% threshold for this GERD. If you needed a, a feeding tube or if you needed surgical intervention, under these new rules, you could be rated at 80%. Let's break it down. The 80% threshold, if you have severe esophageal stricture causing difficulty swallowing, causing aspiration, which is essentially, you know, if food or water goes into your lungs because stuff's going down the wrong pipe, undernutrition, right? This is malnourishment. It's causing you to, to be uh, absorb your nutrients in a less effective manner or substantial weight loss, which is an actual defined definition. And you can find this in the link in the description. And you need surgery or a feeding tube. That is the 80% threshold. The 50% threshold, you either have recurrent or refractory esophageal stricture, again, narrowing of that esophagus, difficulty swallowing, and you need dilation three or more times per year, like I said, steroids at least once a year, or an esophageal stent. 
Okay, that's a medical procedure. The 30%, we're moving into something that might be a little bit more common now. You have recurrent esophageal stricture, tightening that pathway, causing difficulty swallowing, and you need stretching of the esophagus, that dilation, up to two times a year. And 10%, you have esophageal stricture that requires daily medications to control symptoms, but you're otherwise symptom-free. So if you're, you know, prescribed Nexium uh, for your GERD and otherwise you're, you're pretty symptom-free, you could fall under this 10% rating as written. Let's move on now to IBS. IBS is, is, is like a roller coaster ride for your gut, right? You have these ups and downs, twists and turns, talking about it's diarrhea one day, it's constipation the next day. Horrible thing to experience. So beforehand, IBS was rated on how frequent or severe your symptoms were, like abdominal pain, diarrhea, constipation, uh, and if it switched between the two. Now, it focuses more on your abdominal abdominal pain specifically when it relates to bowel movements and if you have other symptoms like changes in the stool frequency or form or bloating or even mucus in your stool this is all going to come into play so let me break down for you the ratings first and then i'm going to follow up by telling you what the symptoms are in lay terms of how they're going to rate you because you're going to see this allows you to pick and choose, mix and match multiple symptoms here in this language. So let's start at 30%. 30% rating for IBS. You have abdominal pain related to bowel movements at least once a week, plus at least two other symptoms. Remember, I'm gonna list for you these symptoms shortly after. 20%, you have abdominal pain related to the bowel movements at least three days a month. Remember, the last time was at least once a week. At least three days a month, plus at least two other symptoms. 10%. You have abdominal pain related to bowel movements at least once in the past three months, plus at least two other symptoms like changes in stool frequency or form, bloating, or mucus in the stool. Now, the 30, 20, the 10, they, they say two other symptoms. Let's go through these other symptoms that are mentioned in this new regulation and what they mean in actual English, because some of it is pretty medical here. First one is going to be changes in stool form. That's a pretty easy one to understand. The consistency of your bowel movements has changed, like becoming harder or, or softer than usual. We're pretty familiar with that. Altered stool passage is another one, and this is like straining, right? So you're having difficulty or pushing hard to have a bowel movement, or if you have urgency uh, to have a bowel movement, right? Like you can't hold it in. That could be altered stool passage. That's another symptom. Remember, you need to match two of these in conjunction with some of these other criteria in this new language. Next is something called mucorrhea. Now, this means having mucus in your bowel movements. That's pretty straightforward. Abdominal bloating. This is when your belly feels full, tight, or swollen, which also has some crossover with this next symptoms, which is called subjective distension. This is, again, subjective, not objective. So you're, you're, you're self-reporting this, you're self-feeling this one. This is when you feel like your belly is larger or more swollen, even if it doesn't look like it from the outside. So it's a feeling right there. Now, let's go into some questions and answers. If you have a current rating for your GERD or IBS, will the VA automatically reevaluate you under the new criteria? The answer is no. Um, if, if you don't have any, you know, action on your VA claim to where you're opening up a new investigation, the fact that these rules changed is not going to make the VA reopen you up and re-evaluate you and decrease you. However, if you're not static on certain conditions anyway, or if you don't have permanent in total, the VA really could target you at any time and call you in for a surprise CMP exam. So the answer is no. This will not directly cause the VA to come call you in for a CMP exam and try to reduce your IBS or GERD rating. Next question. If you have a pending rating, 
You know, if you if you've applied for IBS and GERD and you're in the process right now, are you going to be rated with the new rules or the old rules? Well, if your claim is still pending as of May 19th, 2024, then yeah, the VA is saying that that they're going to use the new criteria. If it's decided before then, they'll use the old criteria. That's May 19th, 2024. That is the key date here. What if I don't have esophageal stricture, but I have other GERD symptoms like heartburn or regurgitation? That's a good question. So in this case, if you don't have esophageal stricture and under these new rules, but you require you know daily medications to control your GERD system, right now you could still be rated at the 10% threshold. And if you don't need daily medications, you would be rated at the 0% threshold. Let me know your thoughts on that. Here's my opinion um, on all of these changes, on what this means for you. Uh, I think the new GERD criteria might make it harder for, for certain veterans to qualify for higher ratings. I think that by the end of this video, you might agree with that, especially if you don't have that esophageal stricture, that tightening of that passageway. But the criteria are more objective the criteria beforehand were pretty open to interpretation in terms of severe overall impact to health, right? It was very vague. For the IBS, the criteria actually seem pretty inclusive um, as far as the various symptoms that can come about. It's possible that, that more veterans actually might qualify for a higher rating with IBS. So we gotta see, give it some time and see how this actually pans out in practice. But that's just kind of my opinion on that. I'm curious to see what your thoughts are below. Am I missing anything on this? I'm gonna leave these links in the description and otherwise I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.